Hi, let's understand business. In this session, we shall be discussing about the principles of material handling. Material handling, as we all know, is a necessary evil. That is, no client is going to give us extra money for our superior material handling equipments or techniques. Yet, material handling helps us in improving the overall efficiency of production. There are certain principles of material handling which must be kept in mind while designing a material handling system. These include the planning principle, the standardization principle, the work principle, the ergonomic principle, unit load principle, space utilization principle, system principle, automation principle, environmental principle and finally the life cycle cost principle. We shall be discussing each one of these separately. When it comes to the planning principle, a material handling plan defines the what, the when and where and how and who. That is, what material is to be moved, what is to be moved from when and where and how and who moves the material. The standardization principle, on the other hand, states that material handling methods, equipments, controls and software should be standardized within the limits of achieving overall performance objectives and without sacrificing needed flexibility, modularity and throughput. The works principle states that material handling should be minimized without sacrificing productivity or the level of service required for the operation. The ergonomic principle on the other hand states that human capabilities and limitations must be recognized and respected in the design of material handling tasks and equipments to ensure safe and effective operations. Then we come to the unit load principle. A unit load is one that can be stored or moved as a single entity at one time, such as a pallet, container or tote, regardless of the number of individual items that make up the load. Smaller unit loads are consistent with manufacturing strategies that embrace operating objectives such as flexibility, continuous flow and just-in-time delivery. Then we come to the space utilization principle which states that cluttered and unorganized spaces and blocked aisles should be eliminated in the work area. It also states that in storage areas, the objective of maximizing storage density must be balanced against accessibility of material and selectivity. The systems principle implies that the complete material handling should be looked upon as a complete whole system. A system is a collection of interacting and or interdependent entities that form a unified whole. Systems integration should encompass the entire supply chain including reverse logistics. It should include suppliers, manufacturers, distributors and even customers. On the other hand, Automation principle states that material handling operations should be mechanized or and automated wherever feasible so as to improve operational efficiency, increase responsiveness, improve consistency and predictability, decrease operating cost and to eliminate repetitive or potentially unsafe manual labor. The environmental principle states that environmental impacts and energy consumption should be considered as a criteria while designing or selecting alternative equipment and material handling systems. The life cycle cost principle states that a thorough economic analysis should account for the entire life cycle of all material handling equipments and resulting systems. Life cycle cost includes 
all cash flows that will occur between the time the first rupee is spent to plan or procure a new piece of equipment and to put in place a new method until that method or equipment is totally replaced i hope you liked this video for comments or queries please feel free to contact me at the below given address thank you